So I am Cameron. I am located in, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm located in Chicago, Illinois. I am double majoring in communications and psychology and I'm aiming to go into a sex positive based career. Um, and yeah, aside from that, I'm in the Delta Gamma sorority at my school and yeah. I remember that the teacher was very not up to doing it, not educated on the subject enough, definitely wasn't inter like spe specifically interviewed for the position. It was a gym teacher who probably had room in his schedule for an extra class, more so than someone passionate about sexual education and educating students on the matter. So I don't remember specifically any specific absence mentioning just because of, to me, that holds some religious values in our school didn't really have a lot of that going on, but it was very negative. I remember there was no like sex is pleasure, sex is good. It's more so sex is how you get pregnant or you get infections. And although they showed us like this is what you need to do to be safe, it was more so like scare test tactics of like showing pictures of like disgusting infections and like this will happen to you if you do this more so than if you do this, then you'll be safe and you'll be able to practice healthy and safe sex. So growing up first, I got it in elementary school and it was more so just learning about like menstruation and then boys went in another room and learned about something else. And looking back at that, I feel like it would have been much more beneficial to have the students all together because I know feeling like I needed to be separated from the boys to see like what a tampon is. It led to like a series of like girls hiding their tampons in their sleeves before they go to the restroom and just like embarrassment that falls to adulthood, adulthood. And like, it wouldn't hurt men to learn about a period when they're in middle school and then like i remember girls would get their period on like unexpectedly and then there would be blood on the chair and it was like traumatic forever and stuff like that and then after the next year it was from a fishing teacher slash pe teacher who was more focused on if you memorize the names of the turtles on the wall you get extra credit than anything else which was just very interesting probably the main takeaway almost everyone got in that class aside from all the information he's supposed to be teaching us. Um, so yeah, and then after that, in my college age, ages, like I've listened to podcasts a lot, I've had talks with friends, just like social media really has been what like geared me towards focusing in on the sides of sexual education that are completely missed and like result in shame on education and all of that. remember we would take field trips to a place called Robert Crown which was like designated to cover sorts of like things this was an elementary school that like teachers weren't comfortable talking about from what I would assume and they would go over like drugs alcohol and sex kind of like those main things and it was more like also scare tactics for all of them which I mean granted probably good for some but for sexual education I feel like it like groups like sex drugs and alcohol all in the same category which is really problematic looking back um, so that would be the only time when I was younger where it skewed away from just like periods. So they would go over like the basics of like STI, scare tactics, stack tactics and stuff like that. Um, but otherwise when I was younger, no, it was pretty much just surrounded by that. The switch was in our soft, my sophomore year of high school when we had to mandatorily take a sexual education course instead of a gym period. But like I said, like not very beneficial, very like some weird curriculum that was made by who knows and the teacher just like went through it. So this is where I have my list just because I was wanted to make sure that I touched on the things. So anything involving pleasure for sure was totally missed and would be super beneficial. Anything involving LGBTQIA plus nothing mentioned there like no asexuality mentioned no like how, like the different ways of performing sex, any positive aspects of it being like a good thing, a stress reliever, uh, 
bonding, anything like that. It was only represented as a way to get pregnant or infected, like I mentioned throughout. You think of like the word virginity and you think you can only lose your virginity. A lot of my friends now in college even still think this way through vaginal sex with a man. So then I'm like, so do you think all gay men or lesbian women who've only had same sex partners are all virgins? And they're like, well, no. And I'm like, so how does that mean then? Um, And then just like some inaccuracies, like I even took a course in school in psychology this past semester and they were going over like sexual desires and it was just totally like untrue, like facts from 2015. And I had to like pause and call out my professor. And I know that wasn't like a sexual education course, but when you're covering anything like that, having up-to-date accurate information is like super important. Um, I would say there was a pretty big effect. One specific thing was they compared sex to a piece of gum and they said like, once you're chewed up, you can't be a piece of gum again or something like that. And I would just remember like that narrative sticking with me. And when I would have these life experiences that would make me become a used piece of gum, instead of feeling like this is okay, or like that sucked, but like, we'll be fine. I'm like, okay, well I'm a chewed up piece of gum. And like, I can't go back in the wrapper. And like, even though obviously that's like not, it's like a weird metaphor of sorts. It's just like, so it's like shameful. It's untrue. It's just like, it's like the concept of that would be the equivalent to like, if you get around a lot, you become loose, which has been proven untrue because that is not how the female body works in any way. And it just like adds to these falsehoods that shape how like men treat women and so on and so forth. So I am interested in going into like any form of sex, like sex positive career. So that could be working for like a company that is sex positive, that is uh, even working for Planned Parenthood. I interned with them last year and it was super interesting to learn about all the services they provide Um, or sex therapy, uh, just because I feel like it would be so beneficial for people to have the ability to go through all of their sexual experiences and be like, why did that happen? Why was that like that? And and so on. Um, And then just being an advocate for like every, like victims of sexual assault right now with what's happening with the fraternities being exposed on social media widely. I see, I've seen a lot of people like reaching out to me because they know like I'm someone they can talk to and it's just been like triggering to a wide extent for people and just to be there for people. So that that would be more so the sex therapy aspect. So I was looking into minoring in education, and then I would look into ways to get involved with the government funding, because right now in the United States, uh, they only fund for abstinence-based sexual education in most states, which is shocking to learn, because once again, church and state not supposed to be combined like that, regard- in public schools especially. Um, so it could be like curriculum changing, like regarding like funding, and then it could also be regarding, like I said, like sex therapy, Planned Parenthood is a very sex positive place. There's this brand, they're UK based, it's called Smile Collective and they do sexual education on their social medias, but their main thing is they like sell vibrators and other sex toys in like a way that's not shameful or not like promiscuous. It's very like body positive, female positive. And yeah, I just like admire companies like that that try to do that, especially like what the condom thing that's going on, like that's a very sex positive way to make a twist on environmental studies and stuff, so yeah. Yeah, actually, I didn't prepare for this one, but there's this book by Emily Linden called Unslot, and I remember reading it in eighth grade, and it was originally a Wattpad book, but it trans- she rewrote it, and in the sides, she, like, goes back and, like, makes comments on how it made her feel now, but looking back at her eighth grade diary, and it's super interesting, and I had, like, very similar experiences to her, so reading that was, like, wow, like, I'm so glad I got to read this. And now there's a project called the Unslut Project that she's involved in that, like, goes into changing the narrative as well. And then aside from that, Planned Parenthood, especially their social medias, is a great way to get educated on just sexual education overall because although there is big controversy regarding the company just because of people's views, they offer so much stuff other than just abortion. They have, like, cancer screening, pap smears for people who don't have access to healthcare and reproductive healthcare especially. It's very important. Thank you.